danger. Ben's hook also irritating the eye, so don't get in your eyes. And diethyl ether is very flammable, so you must do this with ventilation. And I'm gonna say this right now, what I do in the video is absolutely stupid. Um, if I didn't make the mistake of burning the benzoyl alcohol in the first place, you don't have, um, I wouldn't have to go through all this process. So, if you're, if you want a good working procedure with no problems, here it is. You take your varnish stripper that contains benzoyl alcohol, place it all into a flask, set it for normal vacuum distillation, short path works, but the issue is that a vapor still escaped the condenser. So, now distill it until all of the water azeotrope has distilled over. That is indicated by when the c condensate is no longer milky colored, and also temperature is a bit higher. So now you take your aqueous fraction, you add salt to it, shake it vigorously, and you saturate with salt. Then separate it using a separatory funnel, and you'll get your benzyl alcohol that has been salted out. Take that, dry it with anhydrous magnesium or sodium sulfate, and then add that back in the still pot and continue vacuum distilling. And you will get your pure anhydrous, near anhydrous, benzyl alcohol out that easily. Do it under vacuum so you won't have to use the high temperatures needed. And so you avoid burning the polymer goo. Instead of needing 200 Celsius, you could get this done with less than 100 Celsius by using a water bath and pulling a strong vacuum on your apparatus. So yeah, enjoy looking at my failures and also the mid rant. So yeah, hooray. Welcome back to another episode, and today we'll be extracting benzyl alcohol from this paint and varnish stripper. And now, I found this at Lowe's, and I'm in California, so everything's getting, like, all the fun stuff is getting taken out of the hardware stores. But this one actually is benzyl alcohol, apparently. And now, I'm going to add some sand into it. It increases, um, surface area in the flask. So it helps nucleate boiling points. So we're gonna add our water to this to dilute it. So you can see this mixture still bumps a lot even with the sand added. But it's fine. And here you can see our milky distillate of the 9% azeotrope of benzoyl alcohol in water. This will have to extract the benzoyl alcohol out of eventually. And then you can see after most of the water is gone, the polymer no longer is, like, gooey. Which means the polymer probably is semi-water solid, and that's why it does that. But once the benzoyl alcohol is left over, you can see it distills just fine. And, me being me, I turned around to do something else, and it burnt. So whatever polymer goo they had in there, it charred and left us with an awful smelling yellow liquid. Of course it's gonna be yellow. But, um, yeah. And I tried to clean this up with a bunch of different washes, none of them worked. So I tried everything from bicarb to diluted sulfuric acid to salt water. The, that's sort of it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, none of those washings did anything to remove the yellow color. So, yeah. If you didn't, if you, um, did your distillation correctly and you didn't burn it, then it wouldn't be a problem, of course. It's just me being me. Nothing I do will go right. So, yeah. And somehow I made it even more yellow. yellow. Yeah, I don't know how I did that, but... Oh, well, it looks like old piss now. And... This looks cool, I guess. Whatever. So I gave up and moved on to the aqueous. So we're going to extract it with some diethyl ether. Why ether? Because it's convenient. So I just extracted aqueous washes multiple times with ether. And, well, I'm pretty sure some other solvent would work just fine, but I wanted to use ether because I can. And uh, I regret that because I used up all my ether somehow. But, um... Yeah, so, after a bunch of washings, I tried to salt out the aqueous layer, it went, um, yeah, that sort of worked, to be honest. So you could probably just salt your benzyl alcohol out, but I want to use ether, so, yeah. And you can see we got a tiny bit of benzyl alcohol out of the aqueous layer. So next, I combined the ether with the burnt benzyl, um, benzyl alcohol, put it in a flask, and added, um, calcium chloride to dry it, which turns out 
that's a big mistake. Don't do that. It's the next day, and uh, I just realized I have a major oversight. <sighs> Are you? You see this? The calcium chloride has expanded a lot, and that's because calcium chloride will complex with alcohols. You see, this is why I hate calcium chloride. It's just stupid. So yeah, I guess um, I'll just distill that sludge. Okay, I have it set up. So it's in a 500 ml flask and we're gonna distill everything over. And I'm using my external um, cooling water because I put some ice in it so it's cold and hopefully I can recover at least most of my ether. Crank this up. Edward, no, you can't balance a flask uncat clipped on a round object. Yeah, how about that? Like, ground glass joints are quite strong. You don't, we, yeah, I, I don't even have to put something under it, but yeah. I'm still petty that I got banned for, not banned, but I got warned for doing that. But, oh well. Whatever. <laughs> I can literally shake this and it's fine, but just wedge that under there to keep it in. Okay, we're starting to have boiling, so I'm gonna turn the heat down. And the temperature is in fact rising, so we're getting our ether out first. Six, and we're having a decent takeoff rate. I don't see any ether fumes off of that. But, uh, smell test, of course. There is some ether, so yeah, there is some escaping. Uh, that's inevitable. Why do I have my sash all the way up there? It's ether. <laughs> it's heavier than air. But to be honest, there shouldn't be much fumes escaping anyways. But whatever, I'll lower the fume hood a bit. Those stupid things get jammed easily. Well, it's a two-hand operation. That's a bit better. So yeah. Well, if there were any ether fumes, it would escape through that into my um, drain system anyway. <laughs> I, I need to make that airtight at some point, but... Oh well. Is that... Okay, yeah, I'm gonna have the... Lowest heat setting, and I'm gonna raise that up a bit. Oh, and this is for you, battered chemist, if you're happening to watch this video. Uh, one, fuck off. Two, uh, this motor is called an induction motor. They work using a coil and aluminum rotor. There's no commutators inside the thing. It doesn't spark, which means I can distill ether just fine. And in fact, I can do this. Oh, that's liquid butane. <laughs> yeah, you see that? It's not setting itself on fire. Go pound sand. I am doing a column chromatography, whether you like it or not. Okay, so I was wondering why the boiling point was so high. So I did a little analysis, and I put some of that liquid onto a machine, and the machine said it smells like ether, and it is slightly wet with water. So yeah, uh, this stuff, it's it, the boiling point is higher because there's some water going along with the ether. Yeah. <laughs> it still smells burnt, though, so yeah. Okay, so distillation has slowed to a crawl, and um, yeah, I think it's time to crank up the heat and just boil everything over. So, uh, that's gone a bit loose. Pull that off. <laughs> we only have like 50 milliliters of ether left. Disappointment. But, oh well. So, we're gonna start collecting everything now. So, I'm gonna just put that underneath, and I'm gonna stop with this. this intermediate fraction, and this should be our pure benzyl alcohol, which I'm going to do a smell test, because of course, 
Smells like benzyl alcohol, so I guess that's great. Uh, it, it's very refractive. Okay, so I know some charring in the flask, and that's from the goo and tar in there. So I think I'm gonna pull a light vacuum on it so I can um, vacuum and fill it. And there we have benzyl alcohol, slightly yellow. Okay, so now I'm just going to process the rest of the stuff left in the bottle. And for this, I just did a direct vacuum distillation, threw away the water, and ta-da! We have extra pure benzyl alcohol and the burnt smelling stuff. But the burnt smelling stuff will suffice for synthesis. So yeah, see you in the next video, where we will be messing around with this benzyl um, alcohol to make tear gas. Hooray! Hooray!